Hello my friends, it's Danny, and today I am sharing my clean and delicious turkey and butternut squash chili. If you find yourself craving comfort foods this time of the year, this recipe is for you. It's loaded with butternut squash, which is a root vegetable that helps you to feel really grounded throughout the colder months. And it's layered with lots of cozy spices like cumin, chili powder, smoked paprika, and cinnamon, which are all naturally warming. Plus it's packed with protein and nutrients. So when you take a bite, you are gonna feel like you're getting a big, fat, warm, cozy hug from the inside side out. It's also very simple to make and fantastic for meal prep. So good. You could easily double this recipe and then store it in the fridge or the freezer so you have it on hand as a head start ingredient for a busy week. Now the first thing that I like to do is prep the vegetables. So I've got one onion and I have find that the easiest way to chop an onion is to slice off the stem side of the onion. Keep the root here intact. Then lay it flat down, come over the top and slice it in half. Then I'm gonna peel off the papery outer layer, lay each half flat side down, and slice horizontally, then come back over the top to make vertical slices, so it's kinda of like you've got a checkerboard. Then you'll bring your knife right over the top and come straight down. I'm also gonna need one bell pepper, and my favorite way to cut a pepper is to just cut off the sides, also known as the cheeks, and then the bottom. And then I just chop that up as well. I just cut strips, go back around the other way. And then I've got four cloves of garlic. So to get the papery skin off the top, I like to just take my knife over the top of the garlic, give it a little smack down. You'll see that paper just releases. Then you can pull that off and then just chop up your garlic cloves. Then finally, we have the star of the show, the butternut squash. I know butternut squash can seem a little bit intimidating to work with, but it's really rather simple. So I want you to just like take your time with this and see how easy it can be. My favorite way to do it is start by trimming off the top and the bottom of the butternut squash. Just a nice thin slice so that you can stand the um, squash up upright without it rocking around. Then you're gonna take a peeler, just like a good old fashioned potato peeler, and peel the skin off of the outside of the squash. And this should come off very easily, same as when you're peeling a potato. So just work your way all around the squash. Once you've got all of the skin removed, I like to lay it onto its side, and then right where the neck and the bulb meet, right, right about here, you're just gonna slice that squash in half. Then I slice the bulb in half again, and you're gonna see in the center, this is where all of the seeds live. So you're just gonna grab a spoon and scoop them out. Maybe even saying scrape them out would be a better description. You just wanna get out all the seeds and any of that stringy flesh that's inside of the butternut squash. Now keep in mind, if you wanted to, you could roast these um, seeds just like you would pumpkin seeds. So I will link to a video down in the description box below to show you just how to do that. From here, I like to take the bulb, slice it into half moons, and then just lay them down and cut them into bite-sized pieces. Then as for the neck of the squash, I just stand it up, slice it into boards. You get your knife right over the top, bring a little bit of your body weight with it, and rock back and forth. That makes it super easy to do. Then once you've got your boards, lay them flat down. And again, we're going strips and then back in the opposite direction, like a checkerboard, right into bite-sized pieces. And if this all still seems rather unappealing to you, allow me to remind you that you can also buy butternut squash pre-cut at the grocery store. It is gonna cost a little more money, but that's kind of the way it goes, right? Time or money. So you just have to decide which one is more valuable to you when it comes to your butternut squash. Okay, so we're gonna take this all over to the stove and then I'm gonna heat a large Dutch oven over a medium high heat and add one tablespoon of olive oil and let that heat up. Now, if you're in the market for an enamel coated Dutch oven pot like I have here, I highly recommend the one that I'm using. It's the Lodge pot and it is a third of the price of any other pot of its kind on the market and I Love it. I bought it a couple of years ago to try it out and it has become my go-to pot for soups and chilies. So if you're in the market, I will link it down in the description box below. Okay, my oil is hot, so in goes my onion, bell pepper, and the garlic along with a pinch of salt. I'll mix that together and let it cook for about six to eight minutes, stirring periodically. You're just looking for the veggies to get nice and soft and tender and for those onions to become translucent. 
Then I'm ready for my turkey. So I'm using two pounds of organic ground turkey. I'm using half dark meat and half light meat. You could use all light meat if you wanted to lighten this up. You could use all dark meat if you wanted it to be richer. I personally just like a combination of both. In a perfect world, I would recommend organic and pastured turkey if you can find it. Um, I will link to some of my favorite resources down in the description box below if you wanna check them out. So then I'm just gonna season this with a little bit of salt and a little bit of black pepper. We're just layering the flavors as we go. Now keep in mind that this recipe would also work with ground chicken, uh, ground bison, ground beef. So use what you have, use what you love. Now from here, I'm just gonna break the turkey up into small crumbles and then I'm gonna let it cook until it's no longer pink, okay? It's gonna take a good 10 minutes or so. Mm, this is looking really good. So now we're ready to add in the butternut squash. So I've got that butternut squash all chopped up. You want about six cups of butternut squash. Get that into the pot along with our warm, cozy spices. So in goes one tablespoon of chili powder, two teaspoons of ground cumin, two teaspoons of smoked paprika, a teaspoon of sea salt and half a teaspoon of black pepper. And I totally forgot to add the cinnamon, but don't forget one teaspoon of cinnamon. So good. I'm gonna give everything a nice big stir. I wanna make sure that all of those delicious warming spices are coated around the turkey and the vegetables. And then once everything is looking good, like this is here, I'm ready to add in 28 ounces of fire roasted diced tomatoes. Again, the fire roasted is gonna add a little bit more depth of flavor, adding a little bit more comfort to our chili. And then finally, I have four cups of a low sodium chicken broth into the pot. Give that one last stir, then turn up the heat, let everything come up to a boil while I rinse my beans. I'm just gonna take my black beans and my garbanzo beans, run them under some cold water. That just gets off any excess sodium. And then once my chili is at a boil, we're gonna reduce it down to a simmer, add the beans, black beans and garbanzo beans, pop on a lid, keep it partially covered, and let it cook anywhere between 20 and 30 minutes. You just want all of those flavors to come together and for that butternut squash to be nice and tender. When the chili is ready, you are going to see that even the smell of your kitchen is comforting. It's like when you walk in a house and it just smells so good. That's what's gonna be, that's gonna be your experience. And my final step, because I cannot resist, is just to throw in a big handful of chopped baby spinach. This could also be kale or whatever your favorite green veggie is, but this is an easy way to add some more color and to work some more greens into your diet. Simple ingredients like root vegetables, warming spices, and fire roasted tomatoes are such an easy way to create the comforting experience we crave this time of the year while still enjoying a delicious, nourishing meal. And I promise you, this one is so good. I just love the way the sweetness of the butternut squash pairs with all of those warming spices and then layered with the fire roasted tomatoes. This is truly a hug in a bowl and I cannot wait for you to give it a try. As always, thank you so much for watching and if you haven't already, take a moment to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss a new recipe. And come on down to the comments below and let me know what you think. If you give this recipe a try, if you make any adjustments, if you make any tweaks, because not only are you learning from me, but I am always learning from you. I'm Danny Spees, thank you again, and I will see you back here next time with some more clean and deliciousness. Cheers! And hit that notification bell so you never miss a new recipe, and... Really, thanks for being here, guys. You guys rock. What the heck was I saying? Okay, we're right there. Okay. Nourishing meal.